my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy, and welcome back to another gadget and recipe test. Today I'm going to be testing out a gadget that I purchased actually quite a while ago. I had it in my basement and I sort of forgot about it. I bought it on eBay and it is this. And this is the wherever kebabit. What? The kebabit. Now, I wasn't able to find out exactly how old this is, but based on its construction and kind of design, it looks like it comes from the 1980s, early 80s, maybe late 1970s. I don't remember exactly how I stumbled upon this, but when I did, I knew I had to try it, so I purchased it on eBay. It did not have its original box or the instructions. I paid about $50 for it. Luckily, everything I need is here. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I tested this out for the first time a few weeks ago, right after I found it in the basement. Today, I'm going to be using it to cook an ingredient that I am super excited about. Let me go grab those. La, 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 la. In this colander, I have lamb's testicles, a whole colander full of them. I ordered these from Farm Fresh Rhode Island. We've been getting much of our produce and meats from Farm Fresh Rhode Island, which allows us to order directly from farmers and small businesses, which I'm really excited about, particularly during this time of lockdown. We really need to do our best to support small businesses. So super excited to be able to eat seasonally, to support locally. I knew when I saw this listed that I had to try it in the kebabit because of just the pun. I mean, how can I avoid the pun? If you're not familiar with John and Lorena Bobbitt, it's an infamous tale from 1989 in which Lorena Bobbitt, the wife, was abused by her husband and in the middle of the night while he slept, she took a kitchen knife and lopped off his penis. So Bobbitt kebabit, I knew I had to cook testicles even though testicles were not involved. I just couldn't resist. I will also include the Wikipedia link down below if you wanna learn more of that sordid tale as well. So for the preparation of my lamb's testicles, which are incidentally eaten all over the world, particularly in the Middle East where they are skewered, grilled, pan sauteed, very simply. So this will be the second time I've prepared testicles. The first time was bull's testicles that I prepared Rocky Mountain Oyster style. I will also put that link down below. That was a much larger ball, as you can imagine, a much larger animal. So we're going to rinse off the testicles first in some cool water and we have to remove the outer membrane which is very very tough. Wow look at that. The outside of the testicle is covered with a membrane that needs to be removed. So we're supposed to cut one end here. Sorry fellas. This membrane is very tough so we're going to score it and then using your finger Kind of just loosen it and that's the part that we're going to eat inside the very very tender tender part right there so you can gently remove it and separate it from the membrane it actually comes out very easily look at that it's so great it's like a little kidney it's a little soft tender potato so i'm going to set that aside and then we can discard this in the U.S., these are also called lamb fries, in which they're prepared in a similar way as Rocky Mountain oysters. The lamb's testicles are cut up into strips and battered and then deep fried. Oh, that's beautiful. Look how it does that. <laughs> so I found a blog post from a blog called Bottom of the Pot, hosted by a gal named Naz, and she said that it's important to cut these into large chunks because they're so delicate. As you're skewering them, they tend to fall apart. So what I'm gonna do is just cut these into wedges. We're gonna just season it lightly with some salt. We're seasoning it simply, not necessarily lightly, simply. Just salt and pepper. So traditionally these would be skewered and then just cooked over some coals. But today we're going to be using the wherever kebabit. Now the way this works is you remove this Pyrex shield here I'm going to remove all of our skewers. So as the kebabs are cooking, all the juices drip down to this tray and into this hole. And then there's a little drawer here that collects them all. Pretty 
pretty nifty, right? You can remove this for cleaning and remove the drawer. And that's pretty much all you have to clean. Of course, the skewers, but then that's pretty much it. Now, the way this works is you remove the cap on one side. So I'm just gonna kind of lace this through. Ooh, they're so slippery. Oh no, they're not gonna stay up. A lot of double entendres in this video, right? This is kind of like my gooey duck video. Yeah, well, we're just gonna have to see how that goes. Look at that. I think what we're gonna do is use a little bit of onion to kind of hold up our lamb fry, then lace that on there. And yes, it does hold it a bit. And then add another piece of onion to kind of stop the piece of meat from sliding all the way to the bottom. So I could see if you're cooking them over a barbecue or a grill where your skewers are horizontal, this would be fine. But since this is in a vertical format, gravity wants to do other things with these. Well, we're gonna try it anyway. So put the cap back on. We have one skewer and I'm gonna place it right in my machine. All right, I'll come back when I finish skewering all my pieces of meat. All right, yay, I'm glad that worked. I have all eight skewers skewered up. Everything is dripping and now we are ready to cook. So take our glass shield, put this right on top. And now we're gonna plug this in. I'm gonna turn that on. Now, when I first tried this, I thought this was defective because I said nothing's happening, but something is happening. You can hear the motor turning ever so softly. And if you look carefully, you can see the skewers very slowly turning. <laughs> it's so satisfying. And then this little heating unit in the middle, these couple of coils are beginning to heat up. And as it gets going, it glows a beautiful bright orange red color. And you can smell kind of a toaster smell as the heating element heats up. So satisfying. So the meat is very, very tender and does not require much time at all. If you were pan sauteing this, it would just be one or two minutes, kind of like scallops. If you were cooking scallops or scallops, as I used to say scallops, but now that I've lived in New England, for, <laughs> I call them scallops. I'm not sure what it is, Maybe it's because you're anticipating the food and the experience to come, but there's something so mesmerizing and soothing about watching food cook. So one of the beauties of this machine is that I can just pull a skewer out and the others can still cook. So there is the skewer and it smells lovely. It smells like lamb. It has a gamey smell to it, but it's really nice. And pull them off the skewer. So here we are, my first taste of lamb testicles. Itadakimasu! Mmm! Lovely. The texture is really nice. It's tender yet substantial, not nearly as soft as I thought it was going to be. It cooks up nicely and the testicles are so flavorful. It definitely has a gamey flavor, one that I associate with lamb. And when I say gamey, it has kind of a livery flavor to it, which I adore. I love liver, I love pate, and it has that little bit of a kind of heme flavor to it. Absolutely scrumptious, and I love the texture of it too. It has a bit of a bite to it, but it's not nearly as rubbery or chewy as the bull's testicle that I had before. Also, the bull testicle that I had, it didn't have that much flavor. This, on the other hand, is very, very flavorful. Now I'm gonna try a little bit with onion and a little bit of a little lemon juice. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit of a cumin flavor to it, although I didn't add any cumin whatsoever. And the combination with onion is so good. That sweet kind of sulfurous flavor pairs so nicely with the lamb's testicle. So good. I was going to drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil, but the lamb fries are actually quite rich and the lemon juice goes so nicely with that. A little bit of acidity brightens things up, peps things up, makes that little kind of puckery 
flavor in your mouth, but then it also has that beautiful lemony aroma. Because the lamb fries have a pretty strong flavor on their own, I think they could stand up to a lot of seasoning to this. I think this would be delicious by step with lots of chili powder, ground up onion and garlic and ginger. I think all of those flavors would go really, really well with the lamb fries as well. If you don't like lamb, you probably won't like lamb testicles because it does have that kind of gamey, livery flavor to it. I think that's absolutely delicious. If you are a fan of that, you will absolutely adore lamb testicle kebabs. So I almost forgot to share with you my thoughts on the kebab. It. So it is the definition, the epitome of a unitasker, but what it does, it does very well. There's something that is just very charming and captivating about watching your food spin on a spit just right before your eyes. One thing that you're going to be missing is that strong barbecue-y smoky flavor that comes with cooking over coals. That can't be replicated using an appliance like this. But it's the winter time, you're inside, you want to cook something, you want to watch something, you want to do something festive, the kebabit will do it. Alrighty, so there you have it. Lamb's testicles cooked in the wherever kebabit. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever had testicles before, if you've ever cooked with the kebabit. I want to know about it. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you're doing all right. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.